All right, pick up the play on our first rally, and it's a nice drop shot forward fading into the sidewall. You scooped it up a little bit, and it's a reasonably short shot. Now, our opponent in red is also at the front of the court. But um, what happens here is it's a little bit difficult for him to work out which way he's going to go. You see he fades across and across looking for the cross court. Now, the reason he's doing this is because the natural shot is for, because of the open stance. So the open stance is this way. Open stance says that he's facing this way. Okay. And so that means the most natural swing for him to do is to go across this way. And that's why he's covering the... Um, cross court so he can just take the ball here okay so what happens is to push down the wall our player needs to push his wrist away from him and it's not a natural arc it's not a natural swing and so it's a lot more work to do it's a heap more work to do um, you'll also notice that from his foot because his foot's really facing open so it's really facing this way so you'll notice that he's really pushing his wrist out and his body out to get inside the line instead of his foot being uh, I'll just get rid of all those. Instead, instead of his foot being across this way, and that would mean that he's most likely going to hit 90 degrees to that. That's only just a little other indication if you like, but nobody looks for people's feet, by the way. So um, it's just a natural thing with an open stance and a back foot, a right foot from the front corner, that it's a natural thing to hit cross court because it's a, your body is so open. So the forehand down the wall becomes your deceptive um, second option or other option and off it goes and you see how far away how far across he was our player in red was miles across all right our next rally and we see a little roll forehand drop which is sort of short not too short but um, in the mid range then he's going to play a drop shot so you see he's got his low preparation which, which drags his opponent forward He's trying to keep it simple and play a drop to the floor, and that hits the floor there, which means the ball's going to stay short. Okay, opponent reaches to get it, and it's a simple case of, once again, going in early. And this time he's going to go with a big up prep swing because his opponent, he knows he's so far forward. So now he knows he's going to hit it down the back. He knows he's not going to play another drop shot because of the big prep swing. And he's just chosen simply because of that, once again, that open stance. And he's chosen pretty poorly, really, here. Um, that open stance is there and he's basically covering once again he's covering that cross court the big cross court so um, the big cross court from here it goes right across there is the one that he's covering um, and that's from that open stance so what it does is the other thing that you need to understand is that with the forehand swing um, your um, swing your shoulder is on that's the best way to put it your shoulder is on this side, so it's on your right foot side. So you've got your right foot and your right shoulder. By bringing this foot across in front, what it does is it takes your right arm away from the ball and brings this shoulder closer to the ball. It does give you more body power and body prep and everything to go into the ball to hit it harder. So this back foot shot is generally not as hard a hit. But um, what happens is you'll find that it really, um, you don't need the power because you can gain enough power off a strong body and a punch swing. What our player in yellow choose to do is use top spin to run the ball. So the top spin will add an extra little bit of deception. She so pulls right across it and it will run on and it will go across. The other part of the story is he holds his body very stable and very strong. So that so that's always a, a really good thing. Okay, this last one. It's a boast and he's got heaps of time. So he'll come in with a relatively low racket. And because our opponent's already been beaten twice down the wall, he's going to cover down the wall more. This time he'll hold his body, tuck his wrist across court and pull out off his shot a little bit. Come back and, and there. And he's just turned his wrist. Then see the fi finish of the follow-through? His follow-through is finished already. And so his racket is still, 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 still pointing pretty much out that way. So he's not turned his body to hit the ball. And it's once again gone. So it's very much gone. So the base was not a very good shot in the first place, but we can watch as it goes in again. So the boast, it's a little bit high, which gives a lot of time. It needed to fade into the side wall, but it's set up off that side wall here. And so the big steps, he had enough time to go with two different steps. 
you really only hit the sides of the ball and hit the ball late and then it will cross court. So with this one, the later he hits this, so you notice that this, this is what's going on here. His foot is here and he's hitting in line with his front foot. So he hasn't chosen, he's not chosen to take the cross court out here, out in front of his body. He's chosen to take it back here and then, so not out, not out here, he's chosen to take it back here and he's chosen to actually go and hook it with his wrist back that way. So what happens is he's going to hook this wrist across and get it to go across court that way. So you'll notice you watch his arm won't move too much, his upper body won't move too much, his foot won't move, his back foot will come in just for balance as he strikes. And his wrist is there. His wrist has gone from here to here. So he's just gone wham and kept his arm stable. So he's pretty much just hooked up with his wrist. And his racket is somewhere around about there. And then what happens, it will recoil back to here. So the finish will be back to here. So it's like you go and not don't stop your wrist too much. Don't hook it over too far because you can hurt it. But what happens is you'll see him recoil it back. And it's back there already. And now it's just facing it that way. So it's a great, it's a wonderful shot. So it's wrist back, keep your arms straight, body stable, don't turn your shoulders, and wrist, 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 and then there's the finish. And then you just see he hasn't turned your shoulders open, and he hits out. I'll put a line on the screen and show you the shot. All right, so if we watch what is going on i've got the line there and as he comes in he'll meet that line so his shoulders are still parallel to that line as he comes in that's where his shoulders are as he's just about to strike the ball and you'll see that up on strike there's his strike there so his shoulders are in exactly the same line exactly the same position he has not turned his body out prior to striking and he's hardly turned it out as he's finished his shot there so his shoulders are virtually trying not to turn his body. He's trying not to turn his shoulders out, and even to there when the balls hit the front wall. So the ball is up on the front wall now. And that'll be the ball up here. Okay, so, and he's still got his shoulders there, and now he'll come off because he knows he's beaten his opponent. The other thing about this back foot, which is still very good, is the fact that you can see your opponent as, you come, as he comes in. So you can see if you've got him in your peripheral vision. So it's pretty. So it's pretty good because you're facing the side wall. Even with your left foot, you would be able to as well. By the way, and it'll probably be even almost easier. But you don't lose that ability to understand or have that peripheral vision. The peripheral vision is the one that comes out here to be able to see anything out here, or to see a racket, or to see a body, or anything through here. So your range of vision is somewhere around about, probably around about here, so you might be able to, or you can hear as well, which is the other thing that happens. Secondly, because you've already beaten the guy twice down the wall, that means a cross court's a really good option as well. It doesn't overhit it, and it, it bounces off almost centre court, and then off it goes and it's gone. So it really is a wonderful thing that, that the hiding the ball, the short preparation generally, we saw one with a big swing, the top spin would help you roll it down the wall, which makes it look more like a cross court, the drive down the wall. So you can choose the top spin if you want to make the ball down the wall look like a cross court. That adds deception as well with the bigger swing. And you've got your short swing to drag them forward and then you push them forward with a punch short jab swing. And you can use wrist strength to do it rather than full arm body turn. So it's far from the big heave and smash hard as you can and try and beat the person with grunt and raw power. It's more like beating them with deception and class and it's a wonderful way to go. So the back foot from the front corner allows you to reach further and stretch and play all sorts of wonderful shots. So remember this one back here. Remember this one. Sorry, I'll go back even further. So when this one's played here, he can play the drop shot really easy because he can reach out because his shoulder's on that side of his body. So he's played a wonderful, easy drop. This one here, this guy, see how he's reaching out? Because his foot's on that side of the body, his, his shoulder is on the right side as well. He should have been able to do a bit more, but the ball was on the wall, so it was a little bit difficult. He would have been able to cross-court lob that quite easily. Once again, arm on that side, that's the roll top spin, and off it, and off it goes. So um, it's pretty cool. It works really well. So give the back foot 
a chance and it's only two steps one two so it's left foot half court right foot to the front corner and remember that you really 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 you don't have to get right up into the top corner because what happens is you virtually don't have to get up anywhere near higher than that so all this area up here you don't have to worry about because the ball is going to bounce deeper than that so your second bounce will always be deeper than that so then you've really only got one step two step and you're off and racing and there's no trouble at all and then after that it's a racket a racket and you can reach anything all the way through here and have the options to put the ball down the wall use a bit of top spin if you need to and um, the rest is really simple so there you go it's a wonderful thing to do use your back foot from the front forehand corner and it tends to be more so what higher levers do rather than going with the traditional left foot forward um, but you really do need to hit off any foot and we teach any foot anywhere so there is no right there is no wrong but there is what you can get an outcome from and this is how you get an outcome to beat really high quality good players this guy is really really quite good and so he's just been deceived completely three times just like that so there you go that is your back foot or uh, right foot in the front forehand corner